It's time for Wrestling With Sports. It's the crossover podcast you didn't even know you needed, but you're going to get. I'm Dennis Farrell. And Rocky, you, I might as well introduce you now because what I feel like is going to happen is you and I will say four words, and then we're going to sit back <laughs> and listen to these four guys just tell baseball and wrestling stories, and then we're going to get stopped. So, Rocky Romero, why don't you introduce your half of the podcast? Uh, yeah, I'm one third of Talking Shop with uh, obviously Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, oh, uh, pro- professional wrestler by trade, uh, wrestle all over the world. But my home is New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, I'm a part of the uh, New Japan for about 11 years or so. Office. Nope. Office, office dudes. Yeah. He's <laughs> office <dudes>. he, <laughs> he moved up into doing, the office. I'm doing a little, wow, a little player office. coach. Okay, yeah, little okay. player coach role now, kind mm-hmm. of thing. But you know, you know, you know, well, little, and, and little TR we're, talent relations. We're already doing what we usually do. We just start talking over him. Just talk. They're gonna talk over him, Henry. Yeah. Oh, that's about as all you get. Jason Kim is gonna talk over everybody. Oh yeah, good. Perfect. That's what we do too. He's great for talking stuff. Yeah, Rocky, real quiet at first. Let everybody talk, and then it's like. Oh, I, I got it now. No, 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 no. it's the same thing. As Jason, we... I couldn't even get my damn intro out. <laughs> yeah, see, we stopped right? them off. <laughs> hey. Rock, yeah, anyway, shut the, that's right. Rock, shut the, the fuck up, bro. <laughs> well, you're um, not politically correct either, so. Oh, perfect. Should be a good man. On the wrestling hey. sports side of things, we've got Dimitri Young, Jason Kendall, former Major League Baseball All-Stars, and it yeah. happens to be two players from both these guys' favorite teams, Cincinnati Reds, Pittsburgh Pirates. So that's all I have to say for the rest of the show. Oh, it's, it's, it's time out though. So like, I, like Demetri Young's name, I was like, bam. Well, hold on a second, man. Like, I, I lived in in Cincinnati from the year 2000 when King Griffey Jr. signed his first year when he first came into into Cincinnati, right? So that's when I first moved yeah. there. So that was like that was a cool time for me. Then I started following the Reds, and then so I so I knew Demetri Young was one of the, the name immediately. Bam, there you go. Because you forget about stuff once you – all of a sudden you hear the name and go, oh, my God, I remember that. Then just now, this moment signing on, and I saw Jason Kendall. I went, hold on a second. That was the catcher for the Pirates, right? And then, like – I told you that. Nah, yeah, but I didn't – we <laughs> don't, don't listen. listen to shit that I say. <laughs> no, exactly. We don't listen Everybody's to each other. We're too busy talking, talking over each other, bro. We, we <laughs> like to <laughs> talk. <laughs> so, well, hey, okay, let me ask you this then. So, Demetri, you were not there for the opening of the new ballpark, right? No. Oh, I okay. I was in yeah. Detroit by that time. Carl, yeah. were you there at the opening? Because I obviously a player for Dimitri, but were you? Did you uh, go to that game by opening day? I wasn't there for that opening day. No, 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 no. I was. Uh, no, bro- I, I, was the home runs, but I did hit yeah. the second home run ever at that ballpark. Reggie Sanders Ooh. beat me. But <laughs> there we go. I, that was, I, that was, I don't hit. Like I said, I didn't. <laughs> when I hit a home run, I talk about it because I don't hit. I didn't hit. Yeah. I don't. Fuck. That's fucking. That's I'm cool. I'm talking man. about it all. I'm talking about it all the fucking time if I hit a home run in major Well, yeah, and that's what Casey, Sean Casey, who was going to be on, maybe he is. I don't know, Dennis. I don't know what he's texting. Sean up. Casey's a big he, name, boys. He's a. He hit the first one in Pittsburgh, and Dimitri was. And I was telling Dimitri this. I'm like, hey, dude, you know that you were the first player ever to get hit by a pitch in PNC Park. Hey, doesn't that sound like a happy Gilmore moment right there? <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, yes. yeah, that's pretty cool, to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah. Gee. But, no, Casey had the first hit, home run, and all the other stuff. When I, when I, I was 20 years yeah. old, right, and I moved to Cincinnati to start training to wrestle because I found a wrestling school up there. Uh, it was <clears throat> King Griffey Jr.'s first year, and I went and watched the, the Rangers came to town for some reason. This is the year 2000. Well, there's interleague play. Interleague play started coming, right? And I'll never forget, man, Juan Gonzalez hit a bomb, bro, left field. And that was the old – that's when they were building the new – they were building the new park. They were building the new park, and it was in the old parking. Juan Gonzalez hit it into the new park. And <laughs> – yeah. Oh. And Juan I have, I have to say this right now. Juan Gonzalez, what an absolute idiot. This dude could have signed. Are you talking about what, what he did in Detroit, Detroit. When, he, when, he, when he opted not to sign that? Oh, the, not to sign a, a million hundred million deal. Yeah, $150 million deal because you know what? The fences might be a little bit wow. too far back. Yeah. And they moved it in two years later. Oh, Every time oh, I wow, hear that wow. name, I just feel like, what an absolute idiot. See, oh, in, oh, in, oh, in well, my he position. Had, and he had four wilds, too. It, oh, see, okay, even yeah, even yeah. better. Well, he needed the, he needed that money to pay for it. Next year he went to Cleveland, I think, and he, he yeah, got like dumb for that one. 
See, in, in, in my position, I, I, I don't, I feel bad for him. I can't call him an idiot. I feel, I just feel bad for the brother. I wish he just would have signed the fucking shit. Damn. No, he's an idiot. Uh, an idiot. He's full <laughs> <blown> idiot. <laughs> he said he had four hey. wives. <laughs> they would have moved the fences in anyway. <laughs> they, they did. They yeah, did move the fences. In. Take the money. Two thousand, no, like, right? Yeah. But like, but Demetri, bro, you because you went to Detroit. Was that that was after the Reds, right? Yeah. Is that, is that, that's when you hit one season. But didn't you hit almost? Didn't you hit thirty home runs or something? Uh, in two thousand three, I did. I hit twenty nine, and total victories by the Tigers that year was forty three. We were oh. 43 and 119. Ooh. We almost set the major league record for most losses in a season. Hey, f- 62 Mets. Yeah, we fuck had it, bro. Time you almost hit 30 home runs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a comeback year for me. I had signed and after I got traded and had hernia surgery after getting thrown out by Johnny Damon, of all people. You get thrown <laughs> out by Johnny oh, da- oh, Yeah, you get thrown out by Johnny Damon. <laughs> Jason, go ahead. I don't want no, to- Johnny Damon has probably the, the – Johnny's a great dude, but, um, oh, God, probably the worst arm in all of baseball history. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he takes great, the pin great. out and throws. Yeah. And got me. Now, Doc, we Every not- boy, time on. Everybody rags on Manny Hold on, Ramirez Dennis. cutting John, uh, Donnie, Johnny Damon's thing off. But, you know, I don't know if you guys I'm talking about, when he throws and Manny Ramirez dies and catches it. Trust me, no, Manny, yeah, he, he probably there, shouldn't yeah. have cut it. But Manny saved Johnny Damon the embarrassment because that was probably Johnny's best throw he could make. <laughs> it's going to bounce five times to the next cutoff person. Mm-hmm. When Doc, when I told Jason your favorite player was Jay Bell, Jason told me he had a story for you about Jay Bell. Oh fuck, let's hear it, please. Well, and I love Jay Bell. Yeah. Love him. <laughs> that's, okay. that's, that's a great way <laughs> to tell the story. Good story. <laughs> you're, you're like, no, I, honestly, Jay Bell. Oh. Before you bury somebody, I love that. <laughs> Without a doubt, and I and like I, said, I, I have, yeah. I have yeah. no problem, you know, talking whatever. So, I was awful throwing out runners my first year. It was in 1996, and um. Jay Bell was – this is actually really weird because it has to deal with Cincinnati and Pittsburgh as well. Um, Jay Bell had, didn't make any errors that year or whatever. This was at, back at Three Rivers Stadium. And, um, I finally made a good throw. I mean, I had like 22. I'm surprised that's not some record. The worst catcher throwing out percentage, whatever uh, it was in baseball. But uh finally made a good throw. Where, um, in Three Rivers, there's a, you had the bench, and then you had this big water cooler. And then on the other side, it was pretty much for one spot. And usually the starting pitcher was there. That's where he usually was at. So it happened to be that inning where I was on that, for whatever reason, I don't know. This was a long time ago. And um, made a good throw and went off of Jay's glove and went into um, center field. So I'm sitting, whatever, and Jay gets the air. And uh, so he called. There's a phone right above this cooler. And he calls the, uh, the scorekeeper because you can call anybody and everybody in that stadium. He's like, hey, you know what? That's Kendall's error. That is Kendall's error. Uh, this is a bunch <laughs> of bullshit. I'm going for a gold glove. He's got a bunch of errors. And I'm just kind of like – and I was 21 years old, but I was a hothead. Uh, not – obviously, I have kids now and stuff, and I can't be that hothead. But uh, So oh, he goes, shit. it's his error. Da, da, da. I lose it. Grab him by the fucking neck. You know. <laughs> I, you might have, I said, fuck it. You think you're going to get the gold gold fucking Larkin is hitting 330. You're hitting 240. I lose it. Lose it on him. So it's funny because Dennis told me that, that your favorite player was Jay Bell, who is honestly just an awesome dude. Uh, I lost it. I just, but he didn't see me on the other side of that water cooler at the time. And said maybe the picture was over. But, I mean, this dude called in the middle of the game. D, talk to me about this one. Hey, that's Kendall's air. Da, 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 da. You're going to lose your shit. That's, I mean, that's that's pro wrestling 101. That's how wrestlers hug each other wow. with the knife in the fucking back. Man. <laughs> so, wow. but I, I, I took care of that. That was whatever. And they, I think they all kind of knew that I was a little bit. And I, I looked down the bench and I'm like, oh, somebody, when we broke into the big leagues, it was like, you keep your mouth shut. You don't say anything unless you're spoken to, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And Respect. That. Yeah. 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 It's a lot different now. And I'm sure you guys have very similar stories to that as well. Uh, yep. But I just lost it. I lost it. It was probably like the seventh, eighth <laughs> day of the game, and and in the the uh, to win a gold glove, first of all, the coaches vote on it. So right. if the coaches like you from the other team, then you might. And what they usually do is go like, "Oh, hey," because uh, they usually get these these ballots right after batting practice when everybody's tired and like, "Hey, 
I've seen guys hand it to the bat boys or the, the, the clubhouse guys. <laughs> hey, can you fill this out for me? Whatever. And I'm like, dude, I go, Jay, you ain't. Well, like I said, I, what I said, what I said, but you're not going to win. Larkin's going to win because he's hitting 310. You're hitting 240. And he didn't win, and Larkin ended up winning the gold glove. But it's just kind of funny how the Cincinnati dude. Pittsburgh thing. Were you guys were you guys cool after that, or how did how long did it take since? You I know I'd never said anything, but um, <laughs> well, he, he he got traded the next year, but I mean, no, we were cool. He just I, I went up to him. I'm like, hey, Jay, I, I apologize. I just lost it. And I, was like, I, am, a little, I am a little kid, bit too. nuts. Yeah. No, no, not all. <laughs> we, none of us are. Yeah, no, none of us. Are no, nuts. fuck. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys, I, I can't wait to start talking to you guys. But that was the uh, uh, Reds Pirates Jay Bell story. That's, That's great, great because people think like you watch, you know, yeah, baseball and football and basketball, and you always think you, you just don't you don't understand the political because we don't see that political environment that that happens, and it's just so good to find out because and you we knew it, we know it, it we know it's we in everything it. else too, just like it is in our shit, yeah, because because <laughs> of course in professional wrestling, like you know what we do is obviously scripted, right? It's it's obviously entertainment, and like sure it hurts, and of course we get hurt, and we break bones, and then we get beat up and it, our bodies are fucked but what we do <laughs> yeah. what we do is like it's 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 entertainment right so like yeah. it, and everything is obviously planned out but so you, you what you don't understand what the kind of political stuff that goes in on in real sports and like you know like like that kind of stuff exactly because if you get a gold yeah, glove or you get right. three or four gold gloves in a row that fucking equals a different That's, contract well right? it's funny when my dad <laughs> yeah. my dad was a, a, a coach at the same time i was playing for Detroit, Colorado, and um, I think, oh, in Kansas City. It, it, uh, he goes, hey, Jake, you might uh, have a shot. I know I got at least four votes for you this year. <laughs> 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 hell, yeah, yeah, hell, you better vote for you. But, um, hey, okay, listen. Now, cut to, I, listen, I am so excited for you guys and your impact um, contract. I think it's unbelievable. I used to be a – listen, I, I know that you guys probably don't want to, to, to drop names of different organizations, and I won't because it's all about impact right now. But I do have to ask you guys one question that I've been dying to ask you. Um, how awesome was it for you guys to be in, I don't know if it's going to be the last or not last, but the last, uh, the, the WrestleMania with The Undertaker. I don't know, obviously, I don't know. But that has to be something really, really cool for you guys because, I mean, you're talking about The Undertaker. And I know you guys all, but I, that to me, that is, like, awesome. Yeah, I mean, he's uh... – yeah no matter how you personally feel about him, we don't hold any ill will yeah. toward the undertaker, but he he's the John Wayne of our business. You know what I mean? Like he's the benchmark. He was the guy for so many years. And it's funny too, because you talk about like the politics and baseball and shit. And I'm not talking about baseball, but just in the hierarchy of pro wrestling. Like when I was in WWE the first time, the undertaker was the fucking godfather. You didn't sneeze around the motherfucker because he was the, he was the Don of the locker room. You know yeah. what I mean? And if, you were going to do something. If you were going to hit on a girl in a bar, you had to be like, Hey brother, is this cool? You know, okay, like yeah. it was, yeah, it was totally like that. So like all these years later and him being at the end of his career and stuff. And then, um, you know, Chad getting tombstone to his death and me being thrown to my death, being the end of our uh, WWE runs a little bit. What's even better than that is the Boneyard match is iconic. It's going to go down in history. And now followed up the Boner Yard and talk and shop of mania on our very own pay-per-view from my backyard this Saturday on all American and Canadian pay-per-view outlets and on iPay-per-view via the fight app is going to be fucking iconic as well. So make sure you tune in for that. That's my cheap plug. Uh, you know, no, 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 no. <laughs> cheap plug. We have hey, like hey, hey, Jay, we have my 12 turn, listeners. My Don't turn. worry about it. Hey, hey, give me the mic. Give me the mic. Take the mic. Just snatch it from me. So, so, hey, but <laughs> bottom, line is, bottom line is – This is exactly like talking shop. Ask about baseball players yeah, as well. It. And, and your favorite baseball player be like, yeah. I mean, if Undertaker's a dick, he's a fucking dick. That's what, I don't know him personally. No, he wasn't. But he, he, he's he was, But he I mean, was. I was I was just like for you guys to be in uh, probably less. Yeah. Because uh, yeah. cool. listen, Johnny Bench is a dick. Um, I, I can sit here and go on with a bunch of other guys if you really want me to. And hey, now you being a dick. Now let me talk. I, I'm, I'm a dick. Without a doubt, I'm a dick. Tell him, Dimitri. Uh, yeah. My, now I want to get into the whole Bullet Club and. See, here comes oh, the boring yeah, I, wrestling stuff, man. No, I want to talk yeah, about, hey, like, you guys about the and football hey, and, and baseball. Hey, fix your hat right now. 
Hey, Rocky. Yep. How are you? There was no, there was no <laughs> What's bullet, up, Dennis? No, no Bullet Club in the WWE with Finn, both Finn Balor and AJ Styles. You had the OC. Are y'all going to um do something along the lines of Impact, or or that's, we going to have to stay tuned? Nah, that's that's the cool thing is because, like, you know, WWE never never ran strong with what they had, man. They had the, yeah. they had the base of – uh, one of the coolest things that ever happened in professional wrestling. And that was the Bullet Club, something that happened outside That's of true. WWE, like something that actually happened outside of WWE that got mainstream love. And I don't mean, you know, they're that not, was they, the problem. Yeah. And, that, and I think <laughs> you talk about, you go know, back to politics. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean like yeah. Bullet Club made Bullet Club. I think New Japan, like, that might be why, that might be why the New Japan higher ups are eating so right because they made millions of dollars from Bullet Club. <laughs> of course. Yeah. And, and, we and, and all the wrestlers much. now too. I mean, you know, I mean, yeah. I'm eating right because of yeah. my contract. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Got a yeah. huge <laughs> increase after the Bullet Club. <laughs> for two things from you, Rocky. A thank you card and a motherfucking raise on this next New Japan contract. <laughs> but, but Rocky does so much for Talk us. Talk about that hey, off, off Dennis off is eating boys. ramen noodles right now because we ain't got shit but 12, 15 uh, 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 listeners to uh, listen to this one. <laughs> you know, but like, but I think WWE missed the boat with, with what they had there in that sense. But like, they're going to be fine. And obviously, WWE will go on forever and ever. And then they're good with what they have. But like I, I think now that we have this opportunity with impact and like and, and, and we're so good with the executives and the creative the head creative guys that we're gonna do some really cool shit and we and, and, and New Japan Pro Wrestling is gonna be involved and like it's gonna be really fun to see like the, the shit that we're gonna do. It's, it, awesome. is it gonna be a bullet club type thing probably at some point, a hundred percent for sure. Well I think what really helps that too is the fact that Scott Demore was in Japan uh, when they were working on some shit. And he came to the ring with us, actually, uh, a couple times when we were doing at the height of the Bullet Club, and he saw it. He knows what we can do. He knows how over it was in that country. And then, obviously, you can see the T-shirts on every American wrestling show and all over the place, at the mall, wherever you went. So uh, he gets that. And I think that's why, you know, we were a big get for him because he knows the power that, that that thing can have. I just... It's a shame they didn't do it right, but now we have the chance to really fucking do it right on American soil, which is, is so cool. That's very, very cool. And, and I think that – who came up with the Good Brothers? I love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> big man. I started calling – you know how, like, uh, every sport, any business, whatever, if you go, like, is he, a good, is he a good guy? Is he cool? Is he whatever? It's just – I started going, is he a good brother or not? Is he the shits? Should we invite him out tonight? Is he a good brother? Is he a stooge? Is he this? And that kind of became like wrestler lingo. And now everybody says it in the business. And then like, we started kind of seeing people stealing our shit, like, and using it. So I, uh, what's wrong? Okay. It, real so life I, stuff. yeah. No, trust we, me, I got some too. I might, <laughs> if I bolt, I have to go to the ER, trust me. <laughs> oh, we all right. do. So, any, so anyway, I trademarked the shit and uh, now we own it and they can't take it from us because I made it up and we use it and it's ours. We're the good brothers. So. <laughs> I mean, it's, and it's real. It's, it's real shit, right? Like if, if, if yeah. you know, sometimes I've, I've even messaged him before I got to even know Gallows really well. I'd be like, hey, hey, is this, this dude's messaging me a lot. Is he a good brother? And like Gallows writes back and goes, no, 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 you're fuck him. That's actually one of my other questions I want to ask you guys when you're in Japan. I'm assuming you guys met in Japan. Is that correct? Yeah, we, we, we actually before, we, we met before, but we but we got tight in Japan. You got tight. Okay. How was that? Because I've only been there one time and I went in 1998. And obviously it's a culture shock different this and that. But you guys were there for quite a while, weren't you? Man, I, Rock's well, been going was there. for a Chad long, was long time. Me. I was Rock there for too. eight years straight, you know, like, oh, wow. you know, I'd, I'd go back and forth. I, you know, I met my, I ended up, ended up meeting my wife, having, awesome. having three kids while I was there, sure. all on this, like, you know, I, I went there as a, as a single brother in 2008 <laughs> and then, you know, 2009, 2010, I meet my wife, we start having children and, I, and I'm going back and forth to this country until 2016, like, yeah, it, it, it it's insane, but it, it it is a culture shock. But once you figure it out, man, it's it's, it's it such a it's probably 10 times beautiful better. country, man. And like yeah. I miss it, I miss it so bad. Here's you know what? You, Here's you the guys problem, need guys. To, you guys, I'm gonna talk over you because it's what yeah, we do. That's what you we do. Yeah. Need, you guys need to uh, make a Tokyo Dome trip, and we'll show you a good motherfucking time in Japan. Yeah. Hey, you know, any of oh. y'all eat the blowfish? Yes. Yeah. Oh, tell, yeah, tell, tell yeah. that story, hey, Gallows. You want to hear oh, yeah. this mother, this motherfucker right here? Okay. Okay. Hey. 
So where, where, what city were we in? Because I still remember that it, sponsor. That brother's it, dead now, right? That's, that doesn't matter. It, it's yeah. whatever city we were in. I don't know. Who knows? So I'm, I, I, I'm trusting whatever him. Whatever the fuck, he's, Japan. Yeah, yeah, he's taking me around all these places. Like, we had a stepbrothers moment. We debuted in Cork and Hall. We had a great match. He goes, you like beer? I said, hell yes. You like Mexican food? Hell yes. You want to go to a sponsor and eat it for free? Hell yes. Uh, you know, 10 beers later, did we just become best friends? Hell yes. So I'm with them. You know what I mean? We're doing the Bullet Club thing. Wherever we're going around the country, I'm riding with them. So he's taking me. We're eating raw horse one night. You know, he's <laughs> taking me a raw chicken bar. <laughs> Dennis almost shit. threw up, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, it's real. The squid, the, squid, the squid that's still moving when it goes down your throat, but I trust them to the end, right? So yeah. we're with this, this, this cool sponsor, one of these deals in Japan. They take you out. It's a big deal because they got the famous wrestlers there or whatever. And there's this big fucking spread and all these different kinds of fish. And this fried thing comes out. We're half drunk, you know. And uh, he's like, try that, man. It's delicious. It's delicious. So I'm just fucking going to town on it. We finished the plate. And he goes, man, that's uh, – I don't want to tell you before you ate that, but that's blowfish. They only got a certain number of licenses to even prepare that in the whole country. And if they do it wrong, you fucking die. And I was like – Fuck you, dude! What the fuck is that? Yeah, but did it taste you good? It was great. I it's the best. It's, it's, fun. it's, it's super it, expensive. It, it, it's the too. bullet in the Bullet Club from the Bullet Train. <laughs> no, it was so like my so Machine Gun right was uh, obviously my name throughout uh, Japan, and then when we when they when we made the Bullet Club, Finn Balor was but was that was at the beginning of his first big push. Prince Devitt was what he was in mm -hmm. Japan. And they were, we were trying to think of names for our for our group, and his first thought was Bullet Club, and I went, "Fuck, man, that's really that's cool. awesome." <laughs> that's it. Well, and tell him, they, tell tell Jason and Dimitri about you guys throwing it up the first time. I always love that story because I wasn't there when you guys were, were first doing it, but it's a pretty fucking good story. Well, yeah, we, we we planned on throwing up the, you know, we we always we, we love this man, NWO, like Too DX, sweet. and like, yeah, bro, we we grew up with that shit, and like so we would always give each other this anyway, like just through in real life, the country, yeah. in real life, yeah. we just that was just our thing, whatever it was. This was two thousand eight until two thousand thirteen when we ended up doing the Bullet Club. But we to to we were sitting in the we went to Corican Hall, which is a big arena or a cool arena in Japan, Tokyo, the one of the biggest, most famous arenas. And we planned on doing this about three months later when we were about to turn into the Bullet Club. We planned on doing these. We planned this. But three months earlier <laughs> in Tokyo, Finn Balor gets this win. Me and him are standing there. He looks at me and he goes, let's fucking do it now. And he puts, he throws <laughs> it up and his fans, and his fans are looking at us and I go, only you. Because he, he likes to hog all the spotlight, right? And I went, of course. That's funny. Of course you took this, dog. And then we, and we, and then, and we do this. And it looks that's like he's the one that did it. Moment. Yeah, that's my shit. You know? and he, took it, he took all of it. But, that's, that, but then I, you know, I feel like there's a whole different generation of fans that, that don't even realize that this was NWO. Like, yeah, right. A whole generation of fans me, that think this is the Bullet Club. And that's the kids, what brother. We like, but yeah. for the generation before, you know, it, it, I think people thought it was cool because you're playing. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's an homage to the it to is. the NWO yeah. to those brothers. You know, you know, which was you know that big super group. You know that yeah. obviously like what the Bullet Club became. You know, well, and you know that, that's funny you say that because and I'll just give you an example. You guys know who Danny Duffy is. He's a left-handed pitcher with uh, the Kansas City Royals now. He's the yep. number one starter. Kid, grabbing that kid. He's man, good, good, good guy. Um, and we were. I, I have recently, over the last year and a half, have stopped working because I'm uh, raising the kids and whatever. But um, I work. I was a uh, was up in the front office with the Royals, and um, something came on the TV. We we're in the we we're in the weight room and we're talking, and um, Lenny Dykstra came on and did something, and I go, uh, he goes like, what? he didn't know who Lenny Dykstra was. <laughs> Oh, he had he zero on, idea brother. who Lenny Dykstra was. <laughs> and I'm sitting there going, like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, I mean, it's there's different. that happened. Yeah. yeah, it's a yeah, different yeah. generation. They don't, they don't, they don't know, man. All yeah, right. We, we only have like a minute with you guys before you have to go. We'll plug Talk Shop, I mean, you know, one more time before you get off. But I do have to say this, guys. Last time Doc was on. Carl, what position did you play in baseball? Hang well, on, hang on. I'm, well, hey, hey, I'm, I'm curious. Oh yeah. <laughs> Quickly, quick. So in high school, I played. I played first. So I, so I, I had really good. Uh, they put me at DH as a sophomore. I played varsity, right? So I so I was able to play sophomore varsity DH, then DH my junior year, then first base as a senior. And I got my scholarship 
uh, the junior year summer going into my senior year. So you could swing it like Demetria. They only put people there at first base so you can swing it. I mean, I I'll could, go, I Demetria could, could but I. Before we get cut off, I have to explain this to you guys. Maybe you guys. Oh, we ain't getting cut off unless you guys <laughs> leave. Trust me, we ain't getting cut off. Wait for your next recording. I'm just saying that now. We, we do have to go soon, but I need to explain this though. So we went to college. I had so my fall ball. It's freshman year. I, I hit a bunch of home runs in the fall, and I earned a starting job for the spring. Anyway, so remember this. If you remember the metal bats, this was 1998, right? Uh huh. So there was a negative, a negative five ounce ratio. So for example, right, yeah. if it's a 33 and a half inch bat, five. Yeah. it was 28 and a half ounces. And man, I was fucking just raking. Raking. Yeah, well, <laughs> racket balls in that thing. Up, I'll you never to forget to this shit, man. I'll never, and, and, and I, racket balls I, up there. I wasn't strong. I wasn't doing great <laughs> in the weight room. But in, in that winter, they, the NCAA passed the negative three ratio. So now when you're swinging a negative or you're swinging a 33 and a half inch bat, it's going to be a 30 and a half inch, a 30, 30 and a half ounce weight. Man, it's a drop game. three now. Yeah, trust me. Three. Three and I know all about it. Game over, bro. <laughs> bro, it was over. Over. They had to change it because they were, someone was going to get killed. Oh, someone was going to get killed. <laughs> but, it, but I also, I also realized, I, I also realized I couldn't swing the motherfucker anymore. And, yes. I, and I didn't even try. I said, fuck it. I want to get arrested. All right. Let me, let me wrap this up with this. The last time Doc was on, he entered, he put, Dimitri Young into the Good Brothers Club. Yeah. I think Jason Kindle deserves to be a good brother. Oh, hands down. Oh, shit, he, yeah. yeah. Listen, when he came yeah. on here with a dip in his mouth and double fist and drinks <laughs> and talking over us and dropping fuck bombs, he was already a good brother. He's already fucking in. So oh, man. I'm going pro to well, propose this because we're in the middle of a media blitz. We should do, when we get through talking Shabba Mania, Let's do a hangout podcast for a podcast. We'll have you brothers on ours. It'll be great on there. And then we'll do another one on here where we don't have a time restraint. I think it'll be fucking great. Yes. I can I'm all it. in. Yeah, yeah, we could do a swap. Hell yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. In. Nobody else swaps with us. We yeah, I want to hear about shit. you, Doc, I, know you. I, I know about your wrestling. We hadn't heard anything out of you. Yeah, he ain't allowed to talk, was, man. Really? Yeah, fuck him, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, hey, I'm so Doc, sad I want to hang out with y'all. Hey, real quick, Doc, because I know that you have some family in Pittsburgh. I'm going to get a little something together. Oh, uh, I don't know who's out there, man. but uh, I don't know how much I even have. But I'm going to grab some stuff, send it out to uh, – uh, so what we'll do is it, Dennis will shoot me your – Hey, Carl, this ain't you. Rock, no, Dude, no, this is the Pittsburgh guy. This oh, is yeah. – uh, He's the there. Now, if, if I play with Cincinnati, then it might be different. I don't know if Dimitri or I, Brett are going to talk. So, but so, I'm going to hook you up. You said Brett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, Aaron, I'm sure Aaron's got some shit back there in his closet. Well, next time we'll get Brett and uh, and Sean on, and we'll have a good we'll have a good party in here, dude. Okay, I'll, well, I'll, 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 and then I'll get Giles and KY, and then we'll go at it. Love it. Hey, the wind. All right, uh, Rocky. Real quick, can you promote Talk and Shop a Mania real quick? Since you haven't said anything this whole show, I, I'm gonna give it to Giles because honestly, he does it the best. He's the best. Yeah, he got he's got all the info. <laughs> Ahead, the I greatest tried. professional I wrestling parody in history is coming your way Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern on all American and Canadian pay-per-view outlets on iPay-per-view via the Fight App. Witness the iconic Boner Yard match where Chad Too Bad takes on Sex Ferguson. Witness the fallout between the Guerrero family and the iconic, or are they really, El Luchador family when Chavo Guerrero tries to shoot fucking murder chico el luchador <laughs> see our very own tribute to the 90s a social distancing battle royal and some of the worst shit you've ever seen including a briefcase on a tree match enjoy this remember it's a hard time in the world but we did this to make you laugh so if you hate it you're only at 14.99 fuck us $14 and, 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 and that being said if you don't watch this you're an absolute idiot yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. Now we're talking, Jason one, Kendall. One, uh -huh. one, la one, last, one last thing, Brother Kendall. If you do that, that'll pop the shit out of me because I'm flying uh, next Saturday to, uh, to see my mom and dad. I'm surprising my dad having a surprise 60th birthday party for him. My uncle's going to be there, and they're Pittsburgh maniacs, so that would be just fucking amazing. They are. Awesome. Hey, it was a pleasure meeting you guys, cool. man. Uh, I was be a good, big fan for a long time. Can't wait to do this again, boys. Yeah. Thank you.